Hello and welcome to this short video on calculating summary statistics in R. So the first step, let's get R started. Start a new script. Let's make the script window pretty big. First step, in order to do summary statistics on variables, you have to have the variables in. So let's go ahead and load the uh, stat grades data set. This should be familiar from those who watched video R0. Again, the key here is the read.csv. And you should know what SG$ does. So I'm going to run those three lines. And SG all by itself will give you the entire data set. Here's the data set. consists of ID, grade, gender, GPA, SAT math, age, college, and GPA percent, which is just the GPA divided by 4. Also, in order to open up a lot of functions and functionality in R, let's go ahead and source the this file. Stat5013.r, control R, you run it. These functions should have been loaded. Some of these are going to be very helpful, such as skew and kurtosis. CV is for coefficient of variation. Norm overlay gives you a histogram with the normal curve overlaying it. The ret modal allows you to calculate the mode of a data set or of a variable. Means allows you to calculate very easily not just the arithmetic mean, which is the usual mean, but also the geometric and the harmonic mean. None of the others look helpful yet, but they may become helpful in the future. So make a habit of sourcing this function at the very top of your script. Now notice one cool thing that we can do very easily. Type in summary of the data set. And what that does is it gives summary statistics for each of the variables within the data set. If the variable is quantitative, it'll give you the min, the max, the first, third, and second quartile, and the mean. We'll call that the six number summary. If the variable is categorical, it'll give you a frequency distribution for the top, and by top I mean the first six in alphabetical order, of the levels. Gender, there's only two levels, 45 in this data set are female, 55 are male. College, there's six levels, business, CAS, which is College of Arts and Sciences, CASNR, which is College of Agricultural Science and Natural Resources, ED, which is Education, LASSO, which is Undecided, and OTHER, which is everything else just kind of thrown together. So 13 students in this data set were business majors, 11 were Kastner majors. And then we got grade, GPA, SAT math, age, and GPA percent. So we got a lot of really good summary statistics just by typing in summary. Notice we don't have measures of spread here. So if we want the standard deviation, SD will be the function for standard deviation. And then we got to pick one of the variables. So let's pick grade. SD of grade should give us the standard deviation of the grade variable. Oh my goodness, there's an error. I don't know what the problem is. Well, let's go ahead and look. Your object grade not found. Oh, that's right. Grade isn't in R, it's in the data set SG. So it'll be SD of SG dollar sign grade. And now we got the standard deviation of grade. And if we want the variance, variance of grade, oh, now we got to do SG dollar sign grade to get the variance. We can do the skewness. Grade. Oh, no, it's SG. I'm tired of typing SG dollar sign all the time. So here's the skewness, by the way. So for reasons given in the handout, I'm going to do attach parenthesis SG and parenthesis. And what this does is it elevates all the variables that are in the SG data set up to the current environment, which means that every variable within the SG data set is going to be directly accessible in R. Control R. So now instead of SG dollar sign grade, I could just do SD of grade. 
instead of var of sg dollar sign grade, I can do var of grade. And similar with skew. And similar with kurtosis. And for the record, this is the excess kurtosis, not the raw kurtosis. Um, the difference between the two is excess kurtosis is always three less than the raw kurtosis for reasons given in class. We can calculate the median. Seventy-three is the median grade. We have to calculate the interquartile range, which is IQR. Let's do it of GPA. 0.66 is the IQR. Uh, we can do the minimum. Minimum GPA is 1.5. The maximum GPA is hopefully, uh, nope, not 4. I was hoping. We could look at the quantiles. Just giving it quantile of the variable, it'll give you the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth quantiles. If you want to specify the quantiles that you want, such as if you want the 0 0.25 or the 2.5th percentile, well, there we go. If you want to specify more than one, you have to include them in the C function. So let's say we want the 2.5th percentile, the 55th percentile, and the 97.5th percentile. Those three values need to be included in the C function. Remember C, from last time, C was the collect function. It collects all three of those values and allows R to treat them as just one variable. So the 2.5th percentile is 1.83, the 55th percentile is 3.27, and the 97.5th percentile is 3.77. So 95% of all GPAs in the sample fall between 1.83 and 3.77. We can do the mean of grade. The mean grade is 72.31. That's the arithmetic mean. We can calculate the other means, the not just the arithmetic, but also the geometric mean and the harmonic mean. Arithmetic mean was 72.31. The geometric was 71.22. Harmonic was 70.07. And we didn't do a trimmed mean, but we could if we wanted to. Let's do GPA. We want to have a 25% trimmed mean. What the trimming does is it cuts off the values from both sides and finds the means of what's left over. The arithmetic mean trimmed mean is 3.18. The geometric trimmed mean is 3.15. The harmonic trimmed mean is 3.14. Those were all for quantitative variables. Let's look how to deal with categorical. For instance, the college variable. Function is table. And what table does is it gives you a frequency table of all the levels within that categorical variable. 13 business, 57 casts, 11 casner, 9 ed, 1 lasso, and 9 other. We could also calculate the modal value. We know that the modal value is the most common value, so it should come up with CAS, and indeed it does. Those are basically the those are the only two important um, univariate measures for categorical variables. So let's go ahead and look at bivariate correlations is C O R. You can look at a correlation between grade and GPA. It's 0 0.335581. We could also look at a correlation between GPA and age. It's 0 0.07777. It's low, pretty low. We look at the correlation between grade and age, if we want. 0.183. So let's say we want bivariate correlations of all three of these together got to use the C bind and this gives us the table of correlations.
little bit faster than typing out all of these pair ways. We can just do just do this. We can also do two ways with categorical. Well, this will not be actually correlations because it, I'm not really sure that it makes sense to talk about correlation when you're using nominal variables. But we can create a table. If we want to see what that table is, this is a two-way table of gender by college. This means that there's five female business students in this data set. There's six male education students in this data set. There's 32 male CAS, College of Arts and Sciences, students in this data set. We can turn this into proportions using the prop.table function. And notice the prop.table works on a table. Control R. What prop.table of just that table tells us is that 5% of the data set are female business students, 3% are male CASNR students, 4% are female other students, 32% are male CAS students, etc. So this is proportion of the whole. Notice that there's 100 data points. Five females were business, five females business, so five over 100 is going to be 5%. So this is part out of the whole data set. If we want to look at conditional, or looking along the different margins, what prop dot table of TBL, notice that TBL is what we called our table, with margin equal 1 does is it gives the conditional probability or conditional proportion according to the rows. How you read this is 0.11111 of all female students are business. In other words, given the student is female, 11% are business. Given the student is female, 17.8% are Kastner. Given the student is male, because now we're on the male row, given the student is male, 10.9% are education. Given the student is male, 58% are College of Arts and Sciences. So margin equals 1 is according to gender, which happens to be the first variable in the table command that we did. Now I suppose you can guess what margin equals 2 is going to be. It's going to be according to college, or conditional on college. So what this number is, is given the student is a business student, 0.6153846 are male. Here, given the student is an education student, 0.333 are female. Given the student is an other, 0.5556 are male. So for margin equals 1, which was the first example, we're given the gender and finding the probabilities of each of the colleges. For margin equals 2, we're given the college and finding the probability for each of the genders. In chapter 2, we're going to cover conditional probabilities, and this will make a lot more sense. So in some ways, I'm saying, OK, wait till chapter 2. In other, wa other ways, I'm saying, OK, we're done with this script. Hopefully this was helpful. Take care of yourself.